Sros are flying in the sky, one ahead and two behind, one behind and two ahead, one between two and three in a row. Can you figure out the exact number of crows? Three. They're moving one after another. Barista needs to fill two sacks with coffee from another sack of a similar size. Can you figure out how to do it? Easy. Put the empty bags into one another and then fill them with coffee. Two mothers and two daughters enter a coffee shop and order three cappuccinos. Each gets one. How's that possible? They are a grandmother, a daughter, and a granddaughter. Can you write a number that consists of 11 thousands, 11 hundreds, and 11 digits? Many people think it will be 111,111, but in fact, it's 12,111. Rachel's computer gets broken, but she has to do urgent work. So she decides to use her husband's laptop instead. But unfortunately, he has changed the password. Luckily, Rachel finds a note with a clue nearby, SBDIFM. She enters the code, but it doesn't work. Can you help her crack the password? To solve this puzzle, Rachel needs to change each letter with the previous letter in the alphabet. S implies R, B implies A, D should be replaced with C, and so on. And the final password is Rachel. Oh, so yes. cute. Peter, Jenny, and Timothy are trapped in three separate cages. Peter's cell has an explosive in it. Jenny's cage is filled with toxic gas. And Timothy's cell is covered with ice. Can you guess who has more chances to survive? Timothy. It's just ice, so it's gonna be melting soon. Timothy won't have time to freeze. Yeah. Gerald is 100 years and a few months old, but he only had 25 birthdays in his entire life. How could this be? The man was born on February 29th, so his birthday only takes place once every four years. The police find out that several criminals are going to leave the city by train this morning. Security guards at the railway station detain four suspicious people and examine their baggage. Can you help them figure out who's innocent? This guy carries toothpaste without a toothbrush. Oh, A supposedly blind person carries a flashlight. Oh. And why would a bald man need a bottle of shampoo? It seems only the guy on the left isn't a criminal. Birds sat one on each tree. One didn't have a place. But when they sat two on each, one tree was left free. Can you figure out the number of birds and trees? Four birds and three trees. A farmer has 350 oranges. Hmm. The challenge is to divide them into three piles so that one pile would be four times smaller than the largest one. And another pile, two times smaller than the largest one. How many apples would be in each pile? Zero. The farmer has 350 oranges, not apples. David invites his friends to spend a weekend at his house. They come along and have tons of fun. Unfortunately, a terrible storm starts the day before they have to leave. It's pouring with rain, and strong winds are breaking trees, tearing down power lines, and causing power outages all over the place. The next morning, the weather gets better. But David discovers that his gold watch is missing. It was a very expensive gift from his grandpa. David asks all his friends just one question. I can't find one thing that's very important to me. Can you tell me what you were doing yesterday? Monica says, I spent most of the day in my room studying. Mike says, I was practicing my electric guitar in the garage. And Mia says, I don't even know what your watch looks like. After hearing their answers, David knows for sure who's lying. Mm. 
Can you figure it out? There was a power outage. It means Mike couldn't play the electric guitar. Also, David said nothing about the important thing being a watch. So how did Mia know it? Therefore, Mike and Mia stole the watch. Uh -huh. Can you create a square by moving just one matchstick? You need to think outside the box to crack this puzzle. Here's the solution. This square is tiny, but it still matches the task. Rob runs a restaurant. He has four barrels of excellent kombucha. He's saving them for the upcoming anniversary party, which will start in 24 hours. Rob enters the storage room and sees a note near the barrels. Oh. It says, I put a magic spell on one of the barrels. Anyone who drinks kombucha from it will turn into a mermaid in 10 hours. Good luck. Luckily, Rob has one friend, Shelly, who's dreaming to be a mermaid. Yes. Rob decides to test the kombucha on her before the party starts. Can you figure out a way to check four barrels in 24 hours? Rob should give Shelly kombucha from the first barrel right away. Then the second barrel's kombucha one hour later, and the third drink two hours later. If Shelly turns into a mermaid in 10 hours, it means that the first barrel is under the spell. If she changes in 11 hours, it's the second barrel to blame. And if she becomes a mermaid in 12 hours, it's the third barrel. But if Shelly stays the same, the fourth barrel is enchanted. A computer store manager calls the police and yells, Help me! My store has been robbed! The officers arrive at the place immediately, but they can't see anyone. Suddenly, they hear someone banging on the door in the corner of the store. They unlock it and see an anxious lady. It's the manager. Someone locked me in the storage room. It must be one of the shop assistants. Huh? The police officers ask the lady to call her employees for interrogation. The manager says, Just a second, I can't find my phone. Oh, it's over here. She didn't even start to call before the officers arrested her. Why? She was locked in the room, and the phone was lying on a counter. How could she call the police? Where does Friday actually come before Thursday? Take your time to think it over. Friday always comes before Thursday in the dictionary. Nina sneaks out of the house late in the evening to meet her secret boyfriend. She thinks that she's very careful and quiet, but all of Nina's roommates know about her plan. Also, they know that Nina will return at midnight. They decide to make a bet. The one who would notice Nina first, when she starts climbing the fence, would be the winner. This person would be free from chores for one month. To avoid falling asleep, Bella switches on her favorite series. Nora goes to the kitchen to make snacks for everyone. Wendy takes a seat in the living room with a book. And finally, Kelly goes to her bedroom and starts meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nina when the time comes? Kelly. Her eyes will be used to the darkness and she will see better than the others. Lily is a cool pastry chef. She's been working hard in the kitchen all night to create a special wedding cake. Finally, it's ready. Yeah. Lily puts it in the fridge and goes outdoors to take a break. Fifteen minutes later, she returns and nearly faints. Some monster had ruined her masterpiece. Lily questions three suspects. Diana, the barista, says, I opened the fridge an hour ago to grab a new carton of soy milk. Your cake was fine. Paul, the bakery's manager, says, I didn't touch the cake. I was talking on the phone with our clients. And Will, the janitor, says, I entered the kitchen five minutes ago and noticed some chocolate on the floor near the fridge. I opened it and saw the broken cake, but it wasn't me. Who's lying? Diana. An hour ago, the cake wasn't finished yet, so she just couldn't see it in the fridge. Mary parks her car near her favorite store. Can you see anything weird here?
Take a look at the reflection in the window. The color of her car doesn't match reality. A small town hosts a winter festival with an ice sculpture competition. The top three sculptures made it to the final. The party goes well and everyone has fun. Oh no, someone has sprinkled the sculptures with salt. They're losing their shape and falling apart. The local sheriff interrogates three suspects. Brian says, I didn't do it, I was too busy building a snowman. Gemma says, I was far from the sculptures taking selfies with my granny near the dining area. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And Dan says, I believe it was Brian. Hmm. The winning sculpture was created by his ex-girlfriend. They don't get along. After hearing what they had to say, the sheriff knows for sure who's guilty. What about you? Take a look at Gemma's selfies with Granny. There's a large salt shaker on the table in the first picture. And in the second selfie, the very same salt shaker is absent. It's hidden in Gemma's jacket pocket. She sneaked the salt and ruined the sculptures. Amy is visiting an unfamiliar city. She sees four magical creatures in this area and freaks out. Can you see them too? Take a look at this tree. It's a wood goblin. There's a transparent lizard crawling up the skyscraper. Also, there's a leprechaun hiding in the flower bushes. And there's a pixie driving this taxi. Diana returns home from work and discovers that someone had broken her antique teapot in the kitchen. What? She gets furious and interrogates three suspects. The housemaid says, I was cleaning the second floor all day long. I didn't even enter the kitchen today. Hmm. The gardener says, I was picking lilies in the garden in the morning. I only entered the kitchen once to put fresh flowers in the vase. The teapot was fine. And the cook says, I was preparing dinner in the kitchen. And then I went to the bathroom to take off my uniform. When I returned back to the kitchen, the teapot was already broken. Who is lying? The gardener. Ooh. Take a look at the flowers in the vase. They don't look fresh at all. Bob used to be a farmer in another country. He kept chickens. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a bigger farm in another country and moved there. Soon Bob got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't give up and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Here are three matches. Oh, really? Can you make a six out of them without breaking them into pieces? Who said the number has to be standard six? Hmm. The matches make a perfect Roman numeral three. So all you have to do is bring the bottoms of the first two matches towards each other, and you've got a Roman numeral six. You have two sand hourglasses, a 7-minute one and an 11-minute one. Using just these two sand hourglasses, how can you measure 15 minutes? Step 1. Start both hourglasses at the same moment. Step 2. Wait until the 7-minute hourglass times out. 7 minutes have passed. Let's move on to step 3. Restart the 7-minute hourglass. At this time, 11-minute hourglass will have 4 minutes left to time out. As soon as the 11-minute glass times out, invert the 7-minute hourglass. At this point, 11 minutes have passed. After inverting the 7-minute hourglass, it will now have 4 minutes left for time out. After these 4 minutes are out, the total time will be 15 minutes. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.